Hey guys, this is Indian here. Welcome you back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Digger. Okay, so in the last episode, we finished off Wyvern Hill and we got ourselves a weekend supply, which is now being attached us to the Sky Tower where we can locate Ray Park and Ray Plaza. Now this is going to be a very hard part of the Let's Play. This is probably going to be one of the hardest parts that I'll ever have to do in this whole entire Let's Play. Because Ray Plaza is extremely hard to recruit and I'm not bringing in any other Pokemon with me at any point here. As you can see from the Weekend Tour video, the Morning Tour video, we went all the way to the Sky Tower and then uh, coming up to Ray Plaza leading up to not being able to recruit any friends. Taking any new Pokemon with me originally and this dungeon also does not have any traps so I don't have to worry about hitting this sticky or grimy because the sticky and grimy stuff is the most annoying of traps in the whole game in my opinion. Like I can deal with moves being sealed um pp being taken away and things like that but when your food gets grimy or when items become sticky and unusable that's when things get really annoying <laughs> uh no we don't want to recruit any pokemon from this team because we only have uh well we only need pikachu and um venusaur to recruit it and then once we're done this dungeon we shall be starting off the legendary dog uh quest so i guess this dungeon should only take me two videos to do anyway. Um, and also recruiting Ray Plaza will be in the next video as well. Um, yeah, I forgot that Mook's Pokemon is only affected by certain types of enemies. And I don't think Pikachu can have forgotten either. So to do the next dungeon, or to do any dungeon today, we're just going to do some regular bat attacks for him to get rid of him. Luckily we have two Pokemon on our team, so that took twice to do the next dungeon. And uh, I didn't really need to buy anything from the shop as such, I only bought two items and that was the Alive and Food and the Antidote Kit. Because that's all I really needed. Um, everything else was okay, I got plenty of big apples and huge apples. I got plenty of nuts of Iron Seeds and plenty of nuts of Max Elixir, so that's all you really need when you go into a dungeon like this. Is just to equip them and the essentials such as that. Um, like I don't really bother bringing secret berries, dwarf berries, and cherry berries, or anything like that, because all that does is just heal burn and paralysis and poison. But if you go through a staircase, the state of veilment that you have upon that floor disappears upon entering the next floor. So, like, really, what's the point in you know bringing secret berries and stuff like that? Like I can understand if it's a huge dungeon and you can't find a staircase that easily and you're in dire need of getting somewhere as fast as possible. And yet, like, you know, you need to be getting to the staircase as quickly as you can, but if you can't find the staircase and you're nearly dead, I mean, those are the kind of situations where you will need secret berries and things like that. But you also have reviver seeds to back you up, so as long as you have plenty of reviver seeds, you're pretty much okay. You don't need to worry about bringing peacher berries and things like that. I mean... Peacher berries and Ross, though, is the kind of items that you'd use at the start of the game to get rid of ailments. Because you're weak and uh, Pokemon in there might kill you and like a certain amount of hits. And um, yeah, and you won't have Reviver Seeds at the very start of the game. And when you're going into dungeons like this, it actually will kill you pretty publicly on the start. But I'm pretty much going to go through this dungeon by going uh, through the staircase as quickly as I can because I'm not doing this dungeon to grind or anything I'm doing this dungeon just to get Ray Plaza and have him done justice because the dungeons where the legendary dogs are uh, Pokemon in there give very good experience anyway so it just makes sense to grind it for him and uh, we're only on level 150 now so we can go faster and then that will be all the third gen Pokemon um, sort, or re recruited should I say. <coughs> there might even be episodes where I do decide to do some bulletin boarding in here to get some money or um, to boost up our rescue ranks a little bit. Because uh, I don't know what ranks we are now, I think we're uh, bronze ranks moment and above bronze is silver and then above silver is gold and then above gold is platinum and then I, don't, I don't know what else is above platinum because i know there's a lot of rescue ranks you can get in this game and as i said before the high
fire the res rescue that you're not getting from a um, Lucario, which you need about 50,000 points to your to your rescue team to get the Lucario up. And apparently if you get the Lucario up, you can get Lucario up for free. So I've been told. I, I don't know what that has to do with anything. I mean, it might be for all I know. <laughs> and it was when I put back on the website, so it was only like, it wasn't like from one of those baby websites that comes at you when they stir up shit. It was, it was actually a professional website that I looked it up on. I think it was Game Facts, actually. One of the Game Facts um, guys said, like, the list of that. And it said what you would get if you, um, when you actually reach that level. Because I think when you reach the level, you get the stuff. Also, at some point, I've also contemplated on um, adding Wonder Mail codes for Golden Ribbons. And what Gold Ribbons do is if you sell them to the Kecleon shop, they, they give you a lot of money for it. Uh, they give you about 3,000 Pokeballs for each Gold Ribbon that you sell. So, And I think the amount of Wonder Mail codes that you can actually generate on the farm is 16. So if we sell 16 Gold Ribbons to the Kecleon shop, we'll be rich in no time. And if we keep doing that over and over again, uh, or I'll do it off stream, but if I keep doing that over and over again off stream, uh, we'll have a lot of money. We'll be able to buy all the friend waves and everything that that we need. And we'll never have to worry about being destitute because we'll have so much money in the bank that it really, uh, well, actually it would, be, it would be worth it to go ahead and do that at some point in time. I'm running low on PP for it. Yeah, I forgot how tough this dungeon was. <laughs> cough, cough, remember what we did on uh, part, I think it was part 35. We did this dungeon, we did the Black Sea Deep Bay dungeon. I know it was in the part 30s on that. Uh, I might have to use the magical witch to reveal because Dig isn't doing anything against these runic guys. But Mr. You're Not Infected guy is going to be looking at the use a good old magical spear here to save us. You know what song I've been listening to recently and it's a really beautiful song? Um, it's Xenadu by Rush. That song is so damn beautiful I cannot even begin to describe it. It's probably one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard in my whole life. I've just been listening to that on repeat for, for the past few days now. I just get lost in it. The lyrics make you picture a place like literally they pick they make you picture a place a place that you're in like a paradise and you know you're in solitude and you got no one hounds on you it's just you on your own on a quiet you know deserted island in the middle of nowhere where no one can bother you and you're at peace and that's exactly how i feel like when i listen to that song it's just so amazing Like I can't, I can't describe it unless you, you know, you listen to it for yourself. And other people have different opinions on that. Other people have different ways of picturing themselves in those situations while listening to those songs. But yeah, it's funny to think that most of the music I actually listen to, you know, is roots and stuff. Like heavy metal and hard rock and things like that. But like listening to something like Rush or Xenadu, that song is just so beautiful. And there's something that I really like about it. I don't know. Like I've always had a soft spot for slow rock music. Because I've always liked Red Hot Chili Peppers and Dirt Pirate. Red Hot Chili Peppers was one of my childhood bands, actually. I always used to listen to them um, when I was younger. I don't know the Bliss 182 was on at that time, I think. When I was younger. Uh, I still listen to them now, but um, probably not as much as I used to. Not 
saying that about dad or anything because I'm not. I mean, some of that newer stuff is all kind of, you know, some of that newer stuff is a lot more slower and a lot more pop light sound. Because like I'm not really a big fan of pop music. I'm gonna say that right now. I don't enjoy listening to it a lot. So, I mean, obviously, if you're listening to it on the radio, then you can't afford to listen to it just. You know, you're not listening to it out of your own free will. You're listening to it because it's on the radio. You don't choose to listen to it. It's just that, you know, you need to listen to something to pass the time when it's time to go faster. Because when you're bored, you, you pretty much do anything because you're bored. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Gone by this pretty quickly, actually. Very quickly. When we get to uh, the electric one, I think the Rev Zero Dog one, I think we start getting into RSL and stuff like this. So I think we're gonna we can do so like you. This is what I really want to do right now. That's the one thing I want to get get to get to is to do a whole bunch of like you. You don't understand how much right now if I want to get Pikachu's revolving ball like you because it would be so much more powerful and its effect would be so much better than what it is now and considering Raichu is the penultimate in evolution for Pikachu um, he will be at his most powerful in his state at level 40 or whatever level he so happens to be when I evolve him nice the staircase is um Nicely placed there because uh, I hate going through dungeons that have hail, hail weather. Because the hail weather pelts you and puts you into submission and kills you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Don't want that hail. Yeah, I do hate dust skulls and stuff that because what. Dust skulls and stuff that do, considering they're ghost types, they can go through the walls. So they can cut right in front of you if you're walking in in a narrow pathway by mistake. And what they do, they can cut right in front of you and get the first hit, which is pretty brutal. Which is why you keep the same confusion yourself as well. You can always attack them. And um, not only the fusion, and I'm also hungry, so I need to eat something. Yeah, you would go ahead and do that. Wouldn't so that my attacks get reflected. The falls that I'm really worried about is uh, the Aerodactyl falls because they're the ones that I stumbled up on last time. And what I tried to do the last time I came through this dungeon was avoid the Aerodactyls as much as I could because they take so much damage, it's ridiculous. And I know it's going to be the same on this uh, playthrough of the dungeon as well because I'm not really that much higher level than what I was on the first time I came through here. I, when I first came through here, I was only like level 30, 35, 34, something like that. And right now I'm level 39 and Venusaur is level 30, 36. So, you know, we haven't really gained that much experience since the last time we came here. Okay, Ledian, calm down. Give me a sound for a dude. Yeah, confusion is the most annoying element in the whole game. It really is because you want to try and hit the Pokemon, but the Pokemon just standing there and you know you can hit them, but the confusion is just cock blocking you from doing it. <laughs> Same 
going to be able to game this as well. So it's going to give me... You know what I need to do? I need to start playing some more Rare Replay. Uh, I was trying to beat Battle Toad the last time I played it. And I managed to get to the Turbo Tunnel and I still can't beat the Turbo Tunnel. So, yeah. Don't expect that to be a feature let's play anytime soon because I'm telling you that game is a lot more fun than it really is. definitely on the highest of the top 10 NES games, I would say. Like, especially number 2 on the list of the Wii U games. And Zelda 2, I would put in the top 20 hardest uh, NES games. But Zelda 2 is a lot harder than Le Zelda 1. And Zelda 1, I could pretty much breeze through that game without having too much trouble with it. Even though I do struggle with some of the later dungeons, it's not as hard as what Zelda 2 is. Because Zelda 2 has a very good reputation for screwing you over in Death Mountain. And they don't d call it Death Mountain for no reason, because <laughs> I'm telling you, that's all you ever do in that dungeon, that place is just die. It's not easy at all. It's very hard. And Castlevania would also be on one of the hardest NES games as well. Um, for puzzles, I would say, because Castlevania is more of a puzzly game than a They seem to make it more cryptic in that regard. They do. Well, Zelda 1 is actually pretty cryptic in that it's these hidden, um, hidden, like, caves and stuff. Because, you know, you have, like, caves all over the overworld, and you have to use the blue candles to go and uncover them. And in some of those caves, they have uh, hearts and things in them, and blue keys that you can get from objects. So, yeah, I guess some of the stuff that it is in the Zelda games is cryptic, but not as cryptic as some of the stuff like in Castlevania. Damn it, Venusaur attacks Ledian. Resist his onslaught of fury. And retaliate with full aggression. <laughs> should go ahead and mention also that I'm not recording GTA P3 today because I haven't done any catching up on it recently. So I'm going to try and do that tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be able to record tomorrow, but if I can, then I will go ahead and do that. Uh, record some more GTA P3 and I'll get some more on tomorrow as well, if I can. Don't expect anything from me tomorrow because I don't know if I'm not going to be here. I'll only find out until tomorrow. And if I do, then hey, there's nothing I can do about it. And apart from record on Sunday get back. So I will get to episode of Mario Party recorded today, and I think we're doing the Wario stage in this one, the Mario Party 2, no, Mario Party 1, Mario Party 2. Or I might even do the engine one, Luigi's engine one. That's actually the only one that I've actually recorded, besides uh, Peach's birthday stream. And Rainbow... Dust bombs are getting pretty annoying now, too. Because they also use the speed bomb. And I think they also know the move Curse, which is also pretty deadly. I think half of your health or whatever, or 25% of your health, or I can't remember. <coughs> All I know is it's not pleasant. <laughs> This could work on Fizzy. Fizzy, <laughs> Fizzle, or Fizzle. I don't know what the actual name is for it. All right, so these are the sword skills that you get on floor 18 and floor 20. Uh, when you get to floor 20, they just gangrate you with a bunch of juice balls. So I, I don't know whether it's redoubtable you're gonna be more gangrene or something stupid. I know we're drawing in close towards the second one of the dungeon. And I don't think Zig works on Soul yet. No, they don't. Damn it. Yeah, there's a 
also a genre of music called soul rock, so I don't know if that's a technical leap in any way. is one of Liberty's best used uh, Thunderbolt as well but I really want to run Spark but I don't know if Spark is used by a, by a TA and I'm not sure if you have to use a TA for it to be considered to be used by uh, Spark and now we're in a very dangerous situation because this band won't respond by using Thunderbolt hopefully that will clear things up a bit and get rid of some of these code names because I want to get rid of the dust bunnies because it's way too easy to clean them and that would be very nasty and get rid of them I hope I don't get all my attachments in here because it can happen yeah I did put I took quite a lot of them out of here don't need them boom nice this is a new level of the level 40 sweet that's even better That was a lot of experience you just got there. Because you see, Thunder Thunderbolt is a really good thing. It's because you can wipe out a whole load of Pokemon in one attack. And it works out quite swiftly. Whereas Thunderstock only focuses on one Pokemon. That's why Thunderbolt has um, less CP, I think. And also it's a more powerful CP Pokemon in general. Dealing with dangerous Pokemon such as Fly. Well, Flygon can't really do that to hurt me because I'm using Pokeball on Flygon. And I have too much potassium. <coughs> Too much acid. Salamancers are also easy because we use Salamancer instead of Flygon, really. And they don't seem to be too much of a problem either. So. Yep, we're almost there now. 424 is the final four. Ah, uh, here we go. Aerodactyl is right. I'm going to use Thunderbolt. Get rid of these, please. Damn, Thunderbolt is super effective against those flying types. Cool. Oh, yeah, because they're part flying type, aren't they? As well as rock. I think they're rock types. Rock and ground. Oh, how inconvenient. Or how convenient. That there is the staircase right in front of us. Oh wait, is this oh wait, maybe four twenty four isn't the final four. Maybe four is a test run. Boom. Or it might be four twenty six. Right. Unless there is no checkpoint, which uh is kind of scaring me now. <laughs> you don't have to do this whole dungeon in one whole go, do you? I don't remember you having to do that. You can do the whole dungeon in one whole Unless they just uh, kind of put the uh, checkpoint to a much later floor, is what I'm guessing. Because imagine a cavern had a checkpoint, even though we beat Groudon before. So why wouldn't this dungeon have a checkpoint as well? Let's just check the uh, whole exterior of the floor before we go into the interior. So now we're going inside. How come Venusaur is not using any uh, like razor leaf or vine leaf or anything like that? He hasn't been using those attachments. But he says that his moves aren't disabled, so I don't know what's up with that. 
going to the Eden Club to see Yeah. Oh, there we go. We can just uh There we go, that's better. That's just when you're fighting the boss, you just take his uh take his attack off. I'm going to end off the video here and we'll see you in the next episode. So in the next episode of Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Ball Rescue Team, we shall be the next Penny Sword to reach Lake Plaza and hopefully get triggered. So until then, this is MBX and thanks for watching. Check out the links in the next video and goodbye. Yeah, we didn't use too much armor in this episode. All right, yeah.